Ho 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 ho. Ladies, gentlemen, gamers, and fellow anime enjoyers. Welcome back. So, I finally watched Kaiju number eight. I know, I know, a little bit random from the usual modicum of stuff. But I gave my friends an option, and my friends took me up on it, and we decided to watch Kaiju number eight. And I'm here to talk about it. So, what did I think of it? Well, for those of you who haven't seen it or don't know anything about it, I'll give a little bit of a spoiler-ish free synopsis. So, I went into Kaiju number eight really knowing next to nothing, right? A lot of the times now when I see anime, there's some isekai bullshit that happens where it's like, you know, we have vending machines being reincarnated to another world, or people being vending machines in another world once they're reincarnated. We have slimes, which is kind of old news now. Like, as time has went on, right? And I guess this kind of was always the case, but I just feel like it's more pronounced now. Anime has gone a lot more and more ridiculous. It's gone a lot more... I don't want to say stupid, but a lot more out there, where it's like, if you're not in the realm of anime, you're, like, looking at this from an outside view, and you're like, what the fuck is this, right? So, sometimes when you go into anime, you're seeing things that are a continuation of a series, be it one piece that's been lasting since probably before I was born, or right around when I was born, and then you have things like Naruto, which then evolved into Boruto, Bleach, which is somehow still going on, you know, there's a lot of these new age things that are completely new and sound ridiculous, or there's old things that are still continuing. And it's rare to kind of find something, I think, like Kaiju Number 8, that's in a way very grounded. I don't want to say in reality, but in a way it's grounded in the old school style of anime. And it's going to be really hard to describe what and how that is, but I'll try my best. But going into the story of what Kaiju Number 8 is. So, Kaiju Number 8 is uh for lack of a better word a story about you might have guessed it kaiju so it takes one of the old school concepts of you know it's not that old school it's very new school too because a lot of the times things like this happen especially in jjk and again this is slight slight spoilers i need to say something about the story that gives away a little bit but if you've seen any promotional art for it if you've seen any synopsis for it this is pretty much there anyway but essentially with kaiju number eight you have the main character Kafka Hibino, I think that's his name, his main name is Kafka, which is basically there, he's the main character, and he's an old ass man, and I'm not gonna lie, in a way, I related to him, because he's basically a loser, and that's one of the things that I really noticed with Kaiju number eight, is that he's not very, like, he has some characteristics of being a main character, because there's the classic, like, main character in anime, right, where they're courageous, they're confident, they're strong, sometimes they're OP, but they have a certain vibe around them. And Kafka is sort of much more of a chill guy, right? He's an older individual too. This isn't your classic anime where it's like, you know, I'm a I'm a teenager, I'm I'm 14, but I look like well, I'm a fucking full adult, right? No, it's not some JoJo's type shit. This is where Kafka is legit a 32-year-old man. And he works, I shit you not, in a dump. Like he legit is part of the sanitation crew. And his whole story is he's a loser. He wanted to get into the army, he wanted to help his country, and I'm purposefully skipping out on certain things here, but there's a couple of reasons why he wants to join the army, and he tried to, he tried to join the defense force, and he couldn't, and he couldn't because he's a failure, because he's an adult, because he's an idiot, but at the end of the day, he, and you know, you're going to see this throughout the story, he's a very nice guy, he's a very chill guy, like, even though he has flaws, and those flaws are very apparent, he also makes up for them, with a lot of good things. Now, that's one of the strengths of Kaiju number eight. I think the characters are done pretty decently well. It's not some crazy bullshit. And that's the biggest thing. It's like, I feel like nowadays most anime are just some crazy bullshit. And this is like a classic, I don't want to say feels good anime because it's not a slice of life. It's a classic action anime. So essentially the main story is there's Kaiju attacking the city. We see it through the perspective of Kafka Hiv, you know, a, I don't want to say a dropout, but a failure in life. And he basically gets a second shot at living out his dream of reconnecting with some people that he knows from his past and joining the defense force to help his city defend from the kaiju. That's the basic plotline of the show. Now, one kind of, again, slight spoiler, which I'm very hesitant to say, but he essentially gets the powers of a kaiju in the show. He gets powers 
and he's able to kind of i don't want to say play both sides but that's basically what makes this an anime right that's what makes it special it's that kafka is not just a regular guy who's a loser because they definitely show that a lot but he's a guy who has heart is a loser and also has secret fucking powers now, one thing this show does extremely well, aside from the characters, and I don't want to say extremely well like it's great, because there is... Uh, it, it's hard to say if there's negatives here, but there is a couple of things that I think the show does really well that I personally like. Just, you know, if you've seen my other reviews, you know I like certain things like this. He is OP. There is OP characters in the show, and he's not the only one, right? There's a lot of hyped-up characters here, and this is kind of going to go into one of the weaknesses of the show, I think. But it's going to be a funny weakness, too. But he is really fucking strong. Now, the sad part is you don't get too much of the actual kaiju side of him when he transforms. And that's kind of when I think the detriments, right? He's strong as fuck in his kaiju form, but you don't see him in it as much as I would have liked. But aside from seeing him, you know, when he is in kaiju form, when you do see him, he is strong like it is an absolute treat and some of the reactions and some of just how the battles go it's not trash animation it's actually pretty good i think the story flowed well there wasn't too many times where i was like oh my god can he just turn into kaiju number eight already because that's his name he's kaiju number eight right so you know the pacing was pretty good and when it does happen sometimes i was like oh my god just show it to me already because the whole thing with kafka is he wants to be able to stand on his own. He wants to not feel like he got an easy way out. He wants to not feel like he's cheating. Apart from some other reasons, but in general, Kafka really wants to show he's a human who can do it. He's not a kaiju who is cheating. And that leads to sometimes me being like, oh my god, can you just turn into the kaiju already? Can you just fuck some shit up? Because they make it apparent and they make it very clear he is fucking strong. And in the fights too, my favorite, one of my favorite things is the reactions. When other people see him eating ass, when other, not even people, when other kaijus experience him, they're like, oh my fucking god. And I feel like it wasn't explored at as much, not even just a combat sense, but in just a character sense. Some characters see it, some characters talk about it, but I feel like, at least not from, like, you know, in the beginning, it's more than we ever get, because obviously they have to introduce it, but after the beginning they kind of say it like oh you know oh my god he's kaiju number eight or oh my god i can't believe i got saved by kaiju number eight but it feels a lot more normalized than i wish it was it's like you know they granted they have lived with kaiju throughout the city right they're constantly getting attacked it's not like it's a foreign concept to them but the way kaiju number eight is and the way it works in the story i feel like it's a little bit too normalized or at the very least i wanted them to spend more time on the character interaction from it from a non-fighting perspective because the fighting perspective parts are great. Like, don't get me wrong. Those are amazing. I wish they came sooner, and I wish they had a lot more of them. But in general, I think overall, the series was really fucking good. It had things I like, like overpowered characters and stuff. And they don't do it terribly, right? Like, they don't do it like, um, for instance, Gojo from JJK, where, oh my god, he's so strong. You're like, why doesn't he just solve everything, right? There's a little bit better of an explanation as to why Kaiju number eight doesn't solve anything. Whether that's because he's trying to hide it. Or whether that's because he's trying to be his own man and not a kaiju you know there's different reasons there's different ideologies for it but in general i think the main strengths of the show is number one the plot right i feel like the biggest detriment to this show and this this pervades everything right the characters the plot the fights everything is that it's not longer this is you know as of the time of recording this this is a one season 12 episode show and i think that is criminal because not only did I want them to go more into the character interaction, but I also just wanted more fucking content. I'm actually so sad this shit is ending. I literally just saw it. I just finished it. And, you know, the fight scenes were good. They were choreographed well. There was some nice parts. The animation, like I said, wasn't trash. A lot of the characters I really liked. There's some real homie shit going on in this anime, which I really love. But it's just there wasn't enough. I wanted more. I wanted more of just the world as well. Again, I feel like the biggest detriment is they just don't go too far into things like more of the world building, more of the history of what happened before we see like what's in the story right now in current day. We get glimpses and we get mentions of it, of what happened in the past, and they do explain some things like, oh, you know, this is Kaiju number eight. What's one through seven, right? What's that? They go into it a little bit, but they don't go into a lot. And that's probably, again, the biggest detriment I could name to the show. But aside from that, it's not like they do the other parts perfectly, right? I'm not going to say it's the best thing ever. The animation is good. The fights are choreographed very well. 
but it's nothing to write home about. Like, it's nothing crazy. Like, it's not like MAPPA did it, even if they had sleep and proper training. But, um, well, not proper training, proper time. Apologies. Because, you know, even in JJK, at some points it was like, oh my god, what is this? What's happening, right? You could tell they needed to go home and they wouldn't let them home. But, um, aside from that, though, everything in this anime is just, I would say, above average great overall. And the biggest detriment is just I wanted more and there wasn't more. It was too short. I wish they showed more. And season two, I believe, has been confirmed at this point, which is great. It's just, man, I just don't want to wait. I really, really like the characters. Obviously, it's a little tropey, but when you've been around as long as I have, a lot of things are tropey. It's just how heavily do they lean into them, and it's not too heavy. You have your classic tsundere in here. You have your classic quiet people. You have your outgoing people. There's a lot of stuff that makes you feel at home. And again, the biggest thing I would say, which I was mentioning in the beginning, was that this anime really does feel like a old school classic but good anime and when i say old school i mean like maybe like 10 to 15 years ago not none of this bullshit that you know i'm not saying the bullshit now is bad but i'm just saying it's nonsensical this is a very as much as i'm gonna say it and especially with what it is it's a very old school grounded like anime where it's like oh my god this guy gets the powers from the other side and now we see what happens right it's nothing like oh i i fucking isekai and i'm like a ninth level demon god in heaven it's like what the fuck no it's not that bullshit right this is where it's very grounded it's very nice everything is done very well not perfectly not the best it's been done but it's just a classic really nice great watch anime if you like action if you like a little bit of mystery again they don't lean too much into the mystery part because there is lore and they barely explain a lot of stuff like oh how did kafka become kaiju number eight what do the kaiju want why are they here what's more information about them what's more information about the humans they give you very little aside from what's happening in the story in the current day they give you tidbits here and there but not much and that's really sad but either way hopefully they'll explore it more in future seasons i'm very excited for this shit and this shit i think is a very good watch especially if you've seen classic anime where the person gets powers from the other side i think it's one of the best examples in the modern day of it and i'm very excited and again i really can't stress enough how much i like the characters Kafka, again, isn't your classic main character. He has times where he's, like, stupid. He's silly. He's a nice guy, but, you know, he has his flaws. And obviously, it's very relatable, especially, sadly, to me, of people of an older generation now, where it's like, damn, did we fail in life? You know, we're not making a hundred million, and we're not being like Jack Doherty and crashing our fucking um, expensive-ass sport cars on the side of the highway. You know, we're regular people working regular jobs, and sometimes we're like, you know, did we fail somewhere? So... I think for an older audience, it, it somewhat hits because the main character isn't a fucking teenager that's 14 in high school. It's a grown-ass man. And just in general, a lot of the characters, even though they are very uh, cliched sometimes, it doesn't go overbearing with it. So overall, to not repeat myself too much, this was a great anime. I really enjoyed it. And if I had to rate it, I would give it a tentative 8.5 magnitude kaijus out of 10. I think it was great. It doesn't do anything perfectly. It doesn't do anything the best of its class. But overall, on average, everything is done right to where the only big bad thing I could think of is they don't go into enough detail, which I could just argue is because they didn't have enough time because it was a 12 episode season. So it's a short one, but it is a fucking good one. I really enjoyed this shit, man. It was great. Anyway, I hope everyone enjoyed this shit. And if you want to see more of me, please watch me at Twitch TV Assess Technic Channel. And if you want me to see anything or review anything, please tell me in the comments below. Hope everyone enjoyed. Eee!